Hi there, and welcome to my gameplay series for the early access version of Infraspace. I'm Icon, and in this video series, I'm going to explore as much of this early access version as possible. We're going to showcase as many gameplay features as I can, and, well, I want to show you guys what this game already has in store, and also give a fair and honest review while doing so, and show you how the early access version progresses. So, if that sounds like your cup of tea, and you enjoy games like Factorio, City Skylines, or Transport Tycoon, or Transport Fever, this game might be really something for you, and it would be worth staying a while and checking it out. So, with that out of the way, let's get finally started, and game some. I'm going to stay with this uh, with the starter difficulty because you know medium difficulty sounds good because I'm not really deep in that game right now. I know how to control it. I know what I need to do to make the city grow. But beyond that, I'm a bloody noob, and I think that makes up a good foundation to give you guys a real and honest experience about this game. So this is where we're going to build our city. This is some foreign planet. I don't know which one. The game didn't tell me. And we're going to need to extract resources and make the city habitable for, for people to live in. So down here we see our resources. So the first things I'm going to do is I need to build factories to build building materials with. And we need to bring new people onto the planet and supply them. So, let's get started with some sulfur mine, because for some reason you need sulfur for concrete. I don't know, is that, in, is that so in the real world? I really, I really figured that I had no clue. But we also need sand. I, I know that you need sand for concrete, but sulfur was a new thing for me. But, well, whatever. So, these two miners now need also a road, like the icon implies. So we're going to give them some road connection, and there we go. These dudes, though, can't do anything without power, so let's give them a wind turbine. And drop down a power pole. Boom. And now we got, now we're powered up. So, that's that. We're going to build ourselves a concrete factory now, because, you know, that's what we what we were up to after all. Okay, so now you can see those miners produce the stuff they produce. And we're going to need to supply some power to the concrete factory as well. The cool part about this game is that you don't need to do these connections yourself the concrete factory automatically is being supplied by those mining facilities you see there's those little trucks driving around and bringing the stuff so we're producing concrete now huzzah so to help ourselves there's going to be a construction material storage right there i'll put that right next to that and we're we're good now to to store the concrete we're producing very simple, isn't it? So, this won't last for long though. The next thing we need are habitats to, to get ourselves some people to put up as workers. So, one habitat and one atmosphere processor. Without those, we don't have any oxygen to supply our dudes with. And last but not least, the spaceport. So this is what we need to supply our, our little fledgling town with new people. And keep them alive for now. So the habitat needs oxygen as a basic need as a basic resource we can't upgrade it by supplying survival food so that's the next thing we want to do well after we have supplied some oxygen so production wise we can see here this one atmosphere production uh, atmosphere processor produces six units of oxygen per minute so 16 seconds multiply that by six and you end up with 60. roughly it's a little bit less, but 
that's okay. And when we check out the consumption here, well, right now we have zero consumption, but that's only because there's nobody living in here so far. Okay, so to upgrade these dudes, we need survival food. To get survival food, we need farming. So here, the tech tree is being, is being played by supplying science points. So to supply science, we need first off a research lab and a blue science pack factory. Does that sound familiar to you? <laughs> well, I hope they they rename these things a little bit in the future because I, I, I dislike it a little bit, but that's okay. It's early access, I don't want to be nitpicky. So the blue science pack factories need us to supply them with carbon. We already get that out of, a, out of the atmosphere processor. And iron ore, we need to extract that here out of the ground here's a patch of iron ore the resources here in the game are also infinite infinite so that's pretty nifty all right so large mines well not there yet so we're going to drop down the iron mine there and we're going to supply them with an own with some own wind power turbine and let's drop the road down here. There we go. So now it's all connected. And the next thing we need is that blue science pack factory. And the research lab right next to it. I think I should be planning already ahead in terms of what's going to be where. But I'm a filthy noob, so I'm allowed to do things as badly as I do them right now. So right now, you see there's no connection between these two power poles, but if you just uh, hold your left mouse button, drag and drop, or, well, no, if you just, uh, ah, you just need to click them once and then they connect, ah, here, you don't even need to hold the left mouse button, just click this thing once and uh, then the game automatically drops down the power poles accordingly. Okay, I want to connect all of this because, you know, there's a second wind turbine producing free power for me, so let's do this. And as you see here, now this place is being supplied already by those little carbon trucks. So I really enjoy how how easy it is to get the stuff done here. Alright, so these dudes are also sending their iron trucks. And production-wise, this is quite insane. You see there... The iron mine produces one unit of iron per 3.2 seconds, so that makes up something like 18 to 20 units per minute. Or is it 15? So 15 to 20. I'd need to uh, calculate that. And if we check this out here, every blue science pack factory consumes only 6 units of iron per minute, so one iron mine does supply plenty of blue science pack factories. So no issue there to put up more than one of these but so far i got no clue if i really need it and every building here needs population to work so since population isn't an infinite uh, thing for me we'll better be working out properly so now we see there's a the oxygen consumption 0.5 per minute so this thing produces six per minute so we could run 12 habitats right now out of that one atmosphere processor, so I'll definitely put up more than one habitat here. So let's think, is this going to be one of my first residential areas? I guess so. So we're going to put the road into this direction and, you know, I was thinking about, I was talking about thinking ahead, wasn't I? So let's, let's do this a little bit. I'm going to build up two habitats here, because I definitely am able to supply them with oxygen, no biggie as it seems. So we're going to make sure that we got more population. So let's check out how much concrete does this thing actually produce? So we'll be producing four units of concrete in 9.6 seconds. So that means this thingy here produces 
Let's uh, multiply that by 624 units of concrete per minute. Hmm. Well, I don't know if I really need more than that. So let's check out. The sand miner gets out 6 units of sand per minute. This thing eats up 6 units of sand per minute. So, well, roughly. So we'll need one... No, five units per, of sand per minute, so the sand miner isn't even sufficient here. And the sulfur? The sulfur is way, way more than we need. Okay, so uh, I think... Yeah, they have been out of sand. They've been out of sand, but they aren't now. Great. So the habitats here, as you see, are being filled, and we researched farms so farms are awesome they just uh transform electricity into food there's not more to, uh, not more to that so let's put that right next there let's check this out so this produces one unit of food per 14 seconds and has no power so 14 seconds that makes up Something around 5 per minute. I find it a little bit confusing that the consumption of goods is defined here as a per minute consumption, whereas our production is in a second. I, I, I wish this would be the same. You know, seconds and minutes would be great if I would be able to... to put these into the same, uh, into the same time unit would be a lot less um, more a lot less complicated to calculate that in my head but whatever so we have something around five units of food per minute with that we consume only 0.5 units of food per minute so this one farm goes a long way all right so let's research steel next because I feel like you know concrete and steel are my basic ma building materials so let's stock up on these as quick as possible shall we we have unlocked steel production well that was a quick one seems like we have a lot of stuff pre-produced so steel mill leads to solar panels but that's also needing green science packs okay so let's research electronics next so i want to check out how this works in detail so it seems like the science packs just uh, yeah we, we just need to have a certain amount and then the technology gets immediately unlocked okay fine for me i don't mind so you finished the tutorial bizarre i guess so the steel mill just like i thought requires some iron ore and some carbon so we're going to put the steel mill right next to this one and i feel like leaving it right let's see so this thing eats up Oh, that's just another, uh, this is around six units of iron ore per minute. And this one was able to produce 20-ish per minute, so no problem at all. Just needs to be transported up there. But I mean, I guess these are all filthy rookie numbers, and we're, we're definitely going to it's somewhere here. Another thing that's kind of confusing me a little bit is that we have no minimap. I'd love to have a minimap. Maybe this is unlockable later? I have no clue. Alright, so we're producing now steel and concrete. I feel a lot better now about this. So, let's see. Production overview. So, production and consumption. Oh, I don't need to calculate that. The game does that for me. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, um, yeah, good stuff. Thank you, developers. So, that's why I don't need to have these things uh, set up like that. So, I just saw that I had a, concrete, a carbon underproduction. I like that. Nifty. Okay, so we get to, we, we have the electronics research now. So with electronics, we have unlocked the copper mine and the electronics factory. 
So the electronics factory uses up iron and copper. Okay, so where's the copper deposit? There's a copper deposit. Okay. Well, let's put up a little street there. So later in the game, we won't be using one one way street or or one, two lane streets like that. Or is it a one lane street? I think it's a one lane street. You, you know what I'm talking about. We'll be we'll be using bigger guns than that, but for now, it'll have to do. Alrighty, so electronics and electronics factory. Let's place it down here, and let's see. We lack. Oh yeah, we lack copper because we don't have any power up there. Okay, there we go. And according to the game, our production numbers are totally, totally in the, in the clear. That's really, really, really awesome. City statistics. Oh yeah, let's check out our habitats. They already upgraded into decent habitats because we, we provided enough survival food there. Awesome. So the next thing they want are home appliances, and we have to research these uh, first. Let's let's go for a bat. All right. So I think there's not much reason not to go for. Two more habitats. Let's see. Because you see, obviously we produce way than enough, or way more than we need, so let's do this. Extra workers aren't bad at all, so right now we got 50 population and 45 jobs. You always should have more population than you have jobs, you know. It's a pretty important thing. Okay. I really got no clue how this will play out in the long run. I'm really eager to find out though. So we got access to electronics now. So it's only up to the production there. So we have a little bit of a shortage of carbon. As you see here, we're also on the maximum production uh, of our production there. So probably we'll just put up yet another atmospheric condenser and or atmosphere processor, I'm sorry. So this will produce more carbon for our other production lines. And I'm somewhat considering as well to put up another science factory here because I have the slight feeling as if we don't really we won't really be happy with the output of, a, of these in the long run. So let's put up yet another iron mine here. Because I got the slight feeling as if we are hungry. That's fun. It's already a lot of fun. Um, the second science pack factory will be spitting out stuff quite soonish, I hope. And then, oh look at that, the, the trucks are color-coded according to their freight. That's cool. So we've unlocked home appliances. And we need some research. So home appliances are iron and uh, electronic circuits. So good stuff that we've put up the, or uh, amped up the iron production already. So, let's see. Improved wind turbine blades. Mm, well, since I don't really have any power issues whatsoever so far, I'll just continue with the green science packs, because so far, so good. I mean, there's really... It's really a pretty easy ride, so... As far as I can say. But that's okay. There is, after all, another difficulty level if I really want to. So, my farm is slowly reaching the limits of its production, so let's just put up another one. Just to make sure that nobody starts starving here. Because these will be upgraded quite soon. Because, uh, 
we have that survival food for them available. And once they upgrade, there are more there's more room in them, so just want to make sure that nobody will die here accidentally. All right, home appliances. What can I say? And we seem to be not able to satisfy the hunger of my of my re researchers here. So let's we're out of carbon. I want to power up my my science speed, you know. Oxygen processor, carbon processor. So there's actually a full-on carbon processor also available. I see. So that would be right now way more of what I need because uh, I don't need that much that much oxygen right now. But I only have the option to build both. Hmm. No, that's just fine. I don't think that's going to be that much of an issue. So let's see, do we already have a traffic jam? I don't think so. But there's surely a lot of iron on the road here. So building material-wise, it doesn't seem like I have to upgrade my production any further. But there's already a little bit of a jam when the cars try to enter or leave the research labs. So... It slowly begins that we'll have to optimize our logistics, but I don't have any tools, so I can't do anything there. Right now, our only tool of management is, as sad as it sounds, one road. We'll have to unlock more roads while the game goes on, so... Right now, I'm eager to find out what the green signs will cost me, and somehow I expect electronics. Somehow, something inside me expects electronics. But we'll find out. So, Green Science Pack Factory has been researched. We can now research aluminum mining, solar panels, motors, Wind turbine improvements, concrete roads, one-way roads. I want those concrete roads because I'm tired of these uh, puny roads. So, haha, what did I say? I knew it. So, the most interesting part, though, is that we'll be needing blue science packs to produce green science packs. So, this is where things are starting to be a little bit more complicated than before. I like that. So, our future technologies will also need, wait a sec, green and blue? So we need 40 green and 40 blue? Alright, this is, okay, this, this, uh, this is where we leave, where we leave an easy town. I like it. Okay, so to put up our green science production, we'd be needing more sulfur than that, and more electronics than that, I bet. Because right now, that, that electronics factory and the um, the home appliances factory, they go perfectly hand in hand. But also, check out my nice habitat. <laughs> so now they need computers and parks to upgrade. That's fine. And also, it's clearly visible that my electronics production will be soon, or, or my, my home appliances production will soon be not high enough anymore to supply all my dudes here so let's upgrade that production right away so we got not enough electronics production hmm. alrighty so it's already clearly visible that I'm not doing a great job here logistics wise because uh, we need more on that, but it's okay. I kind of like do these um, mistakes. I wouldn't say on purpose, but I don't mind if these mistakes happen because I really, I really want to find out how things work. Because otherwise, I can't organize anything. So now we ran out of power for the first time. So let's plug in one solar, uh, one wind power thingy here. And we ran out of electronics production. I'm not surprised about that. So. 
Let's put these up together here and start bringing up new streets because there's the first traffic jam happening there. You can also configure your roads and I haven't figured out yet how that works. Oh wow, I can actually curb them after they are built. Fancy. I like that. So we're barely producing enough iron and we're out of population. You see we got more we got more jobs than we got population, so let's change that. And I already find myself in a very pleasant spiral of need, consumption, expansion, and whatnot. Good job, dear devs. Interest space is a lot better than I actually thought, to be honest. I expected pretty much um, nothing, just uh, don't get me wrong there, nowadays, whenever I run into a new game, I've learned to keep my expectations quite low. Because um, this this really helps you to be not not that um, disappointed, you know, and also leaves an open mind to things. So we seem to be needing more more people right now before we can do anything. I wonder. Wait a sec. Are these? Uh, yeah, the pink cars are citizens. So there is. An entire color coding behind those cars. I bet the red one is home appliances. Yes. Nice. So there is a way to know and understand what your what your place is up to. So since I have that much oxygen and food available, I think it's only it's only more than okay to just provide a bigger residential area. So let's do this. Putting up a little bit of extra roads, so we don't run into that many logistical problems there. No, not like that. There we go. Supplies will be delivered. And now uh, I got more than enough um, workers now available. So I am now consuming 3.5 of my science packs just to produce new green science packs. This is a pretty filthy technology and I am somewhat afraid that the upcoming other science packs will just do the same and need the green science packs. I somehow expect that. We'll see about that, though. Not yet. So, I think we definitely need more, more of that blue science. And that means we need more of that carbon and more of that iron. But since I now have more workers, that's also totally fine. Merely when you're out of workers, that's not so fine. Okay. And we ran out of carbon yet again. So I can't wait to research processors that are only producing carbon, because right now we do have a massive overproduction of oxygen. I don't even need remotely that much oxygen, but I mean, I don't want to mope about that. So let's put up some extra food production there, so these habitats can grow as they want to. Because we got more than enough home appliances produced, so these habitats will grow, which is a good thing. Okie doke. So, blue science packs, while well, we do produce a couple of them. And efficiency boosted by neighbor buildings. All right, why are they boosted by neighbor buildings that much? Because the neighbors are providing the products they need, I guess. Boosted by neighbor buildings. So, well, somebody knows why that's happening, I'd be delighted. So we're also running slightly out of power here, so let's change that.
Okay. Why the hell does it take so long, though, for the... For those to be... Oh, I see. So there's a maximum for a research lab to store, is it? Is that the reason? It seems like that's the reason. So let's see if this does change something. Yeah, immediately there's uh yeah, yeah, yeah. So the problem was that there were not there was not enough science laboratory space there. Uh huh, okay. So but on the other hand, I'm researching concrete Oh the concrete roads need the green science packs too. My bad. Ah, okay. <laughs> Silly me. Now they're filling them in for no good reason at all. No, it's just not working out because we don't have enough green science. Okay. So let's put up another one of those. Good lord, they are producing slowly. Jeez. So... There's already a problem with my sulfur production here, so we're going to change that up a bit. I know that I produce more sulfur than I'm actually consuming, but if we just patch in the, the sulfur from this direction, this will ease up the logistical pressure on my grid. But we don't have enough electronics now. Alright. Do these gain efficiency bonuses as well? No, not really. Your home appliances factory. So I really don't get it as as of yet, but I have the slight feeling as if it has something to do with the uh, with the resources, because here it's neighboring to the resources it needs. We'll see about that. I only know that we definitely need. Ah, look at that. Ah, okay, here here we get a display about the neighboring uh, building bonuses. Okay. I'm not quite understanding why there are so many bonuses on that, but I don't need to. It's fair enough if you get it displayed like that. So let's see. Yes, it would gain a bonus. Yeah, it's exactly that. What I, It's exactly what I thought. The closer they are to the products they need, the more efficiency bonus they get. That's an interesting thing, and that's also a nice incentive to design your your clusters. Okay. So, copper ore is running out a bit, huh? And that's gonna be pretty much where I'll end today's episode. I'm really enjoying this so far and we're going to continue in the next episode with whatever is down the road there's so much new stuff so we're not going to stop our next uh, we're not going to skip anything i hope you enjoyed this i totally do and i can't wait to see where this game's headed i think it's already in a very very decent spot and i can't wait to see how how complex this will grow. I have a feeling it will grow very complex. So drop me your comments below, leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and of course consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. There's daily content coming up from my side. You just need to hit that notification bell and you would stay informed. Also check out the description box. You'll find my Twitch channel there. I stream there quite regularly and I'd love to see you there as well. So have a good one and enjoy your time. Bye bye.